Okay, this video is, is Antigone still relevant to today? This is Antigone here, and it comes from a Greek play by Sophocles. So this is one of Antigone's brother. This is Polynices. Her other brother was Ediocles. She is the daughter of Oedipus. And she was a great woman. She was loyal to her father, despite all the difficulties he had. So in this painting, um, Antigone is shown throwing some dirt on top of Polynices as part of his burial. There had been a conflict between her brothers, Ediocles and Polynices, to see who would be the ruler of Thebes, in a sense, almost like a civil war. And after uh, they both died, Creon became the king. And Creon declared that Polynices, who he saw as being against him, should not be entitled to a burial. And he said, leave him outside and let the dogs and the vultures eat him. But Antigone refused to accept that, and she tried to bury her brother, give him a proper burial. So she was arrested by King Creon's men, and King Creon uh, spoke to her, and she you know, said, why did you do this in defiance of me? And she said, because the law of the gods is above the law of man. The laws of heaven are not of today, nor yesterday, but from all time. And Creon declared that she should be uh, buried alive. And now King Creon was given advice by Tiresias. That was the king's advisor. He's also a famous prophet and seer in Thebes of that time in ancient Greece. Also his son. His son was engaged to Antigone. And King Creon ignored Tiresias and his son and declared that Antigone must uh, pay the price for defying him. Uh, Antigone hanged herself in her jail cell. Creon's son, who loved her very much, then committed suicide. Creon's wife, when she heard that her son was dead, she, com she herself committed suicide too. This painting, by the way, is by Sebastian Norblin. So, okay, one of the points of this talk is Antigone's, you know, behavior, obviously it's a sad play. It kind of reminds one of Romeo and Juliet to some extent. But you can see that if one person decides to be nice and help others, society improves for everyone. It's the idea of like a ripple effect, you know, you know and that's sort of a lot of New Testament stuff, you know. Love thy neighbor, be nice. Love covers a multitude of sins, you know, First Peter and all that. And everything gets better for everybody because when times are bad, as they kind of are right now in the United States, people have to make a decision. Are they going to try to be good and help other people and do nice stuff or are they going to cave in to pressure and do bad stuff, okay? <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> you know, there's a nice quote here. Uh, this one's from Alexander Solzhenitsyn. He said, The dividing line between good and evil runs through the heart of every human being. Evil and good. Okay. <laughs> Socialism of any type leads to a total destruction of human spirit and a leveling of mankind into death. A decline in courage may be the most striking feature that an outside observer notices in the West today. The Western world has lost its civic, civic courage, and that which is called humanism, but would be more correctly called irreligious anthropocentrism, cannot give answers to the most essential questions of our life. There is a way to help men understand. It is by art and literature. Okay, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, author of Gulag Archipelago. And this totally echoes Ayn Rand, you know, and Aristotle. Aristotle said literature is more important than history because literature, history only tells you what man was, but literature tells you what he might be. The idea of art is, you know, Ayn Rand had said is the energizing uh, fuel for the human soul. And so what I'm getting at here is we all have to decide in our own lives, you know, are we going to do things that we know are better for everybody, even though there's not much of a short-term payoff, potentially even a short-term punishment. And now some of these things I'm about to quote you real quick. I know some of you have heard this before if you've watched all my videos, but if you have, for, for the viewers who haven't, I'm just going to repeat some things said to me by uh, a few persons real quick before the finishing quotes here. So a nurse basically said to me, you know, why you bother with YouTube? You know they're never going to let you promote low-fat vegan diet. These are all billion dollar businesses, all this caffeine, soy, MSG, olive oil stuff. They're going to suppress your videos and you screwed up criticizing Big Pharma. You know that they're going to suppress your videos. Uh, all your books are going to be shadow banned. All your videos shadow banned. No one's ever heard of you. No one's ever going to hurt of you. People don't even care about all this academic stuff, intellectual stuff. They just want to look. They want to be entertained. They want to look at good looking people, young people. You're old and average looking. Your videos are so low budget. They're pathetic. You don't have any sponsors. You don't have any marketing. Um, and another viewer, you know, says the same thing. A 12 year old can make a better channel than you. You have no brand. No one cares about your stupid art. 
Your stupid old paintings have nothing to do with nutrition. A popular channel has a brand, a picture of a person on all their thumbnails. You have nothing. You have no SEO, search engine optimization stuff. Your video descriptions suck. You are lazy. All the stuff about books, religion, and culture, it alienates your viewers who just want to hear about nutrition and health. It's bad for your business. You should stop it. The internet's all about marketing. You either learn it or your channel's going to fade away. Me, well, I was just hoping to make good videos and people would eventually discover the channel. It's just a hobby. Viewer, that's what all the losers say. Me, you might be right, but I'm going to try to help the pros. Okay, St. Augustine, wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing it. Right is right, even if no one is doing it. Dostoevsky, God and the devil, God and the devil are fighting for the heart of men. Sometimes, even if he has to do it alone and his conduct seems crazy, a man must set an example and so draw men's souls out of their solitude and spur them to some act of brotherly love that the great idea may not die by Dostoevsky. So that's basically where we're at. We're either going to do everything we can to help each other and not do bad things when we're told to do bad things and refuse to do bad things, or we're just going to keep spiraling downward. Hopefully we'll make a recovery. And I think... Uh, I think it's going to come down to people accept Christian ethics, you know, biblical ethics, or, or, or we're going to get stuck with atheistic Darwinian ethics, and that's not good.